This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Julianne Condia, host of Rewritten here on Public House Media. Thank you so much for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Rewritten, where we will talk about you having limitless potential and can rewrite your story at any time. No matter your background, your past, or current situation, you can have the type of life you crave. A new show comes out every single Monday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Rewritten. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Welcome to Your Life Matters Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Maria White, and I am a passionate tiny human healer and fired up health and happiness coach here to deliver a simple message to you. This podcast is meant to provide a hope and a dream that fuels your soul to dream big and to dream bold and to empower and inspire you to live out your wildest dreams and to grab a hold onto the unwavering truth that you were made for more. Guys, I am so excited you're here and I just need to take a second to just thank you. This podcast is everything. Your life matters, the community, the people that you share it with. It means everything to me because this podcast is something that I just took a leap of faith and started over almost a year ago. August will be a year and I am so grateful for all of you devoted listeners who constantly tune in every Tuesday. But the real raw truth is I have considered not continuing with it. And it wasn't that I didn't want to continue with the podcast. It was almost like there was a shift in the platform and what I was going to do and trying to figure out how I could still reach this audience because you guys matter to me. You matter so much. I love being able to share my story with you. I love being able to confide in you and reach out to you and help you with tangible things in your life. And I thought to myself, I don't know if I can continue doing it. And it's not because I didn't want to. It's just I didn't know how to. And I figure the best way to help encourage me is to ask for help and lean on you guys. And guys, I'm asking for help. I'm asking you this episode whether it's this episode or a past episode that you love, I encourage you, I ask you, I lean on you. Share it with three people. Share it with three people and encourage them not only to listen to the episode, but to subscribe to the podcast, to leave a rating and a review and tell me what they think. I love seeing five-star ratings and you telling me exactly how it's hitting home for you. But in order for this podcast to continue, I need it to be in the hands of multiple people. That's what this community is about. I want to reach so many people to get them to understand that their life matters, that their story matters, that their mess is their message. So I'm asking you right now, whether you post it on your social media, on your story, talk about it. I've had a couple people post it and tag me, whatever it is. I need you to, you can even text it to somebody, send the link. I need you to send it to three people, three people that may need this podcast three people that may need this message because we could potentially save a life and that's why I continue to do this podcast but I need your help I need your help getting this podcast out there so guys today is something that I just needed to come and be honest with you guys about I just talked about how I confide in you guys and I share my real raw story and I would be lying if I didn't just tell you that it has been a whirlwind going back to work. Going back to work has been probably one of the hardest things of transition. I'm very good on my feet. I'm quick and I'm ambitious and I'm a go-getter and I'm a driven human being. That's kind of who I am. And those of you who know me kind of would agree with that. So the thing that's hard is I have implemented now another phase of my life. I am a mom. I am a passionate pediatric nurse practitioner. I am a proud CEO and business owner. I am a health and happiness coach. I 
am passionate about my job and what I do. So I try to advance my career. I have every intention on going back to school to get my acute care certification. All of these things, all just all of them, all of them thrown in. And I realized that on my first and second week back to work, that it was a lot. And on my second week back to work, I actually had to go out of town the latter, the later half of the week and go to what's called Beachbody Coach Summit. So I am a proud health and happiness coach through um, a platform called Beachbody. If you guys have heard P90X or Insanity Max 30, these those different programs, I'm a coach through that. I'm able to help people with tools to get fit and healthy and happy. But I, as a coach, help with their self-love, help keep them on track. I run accountability groups and boot camps and help encourage women to feel good about themselves. But I surround them with a tribe of people that are going to help. So in Indiana, we all met up and I have coaches all over the United States, Canada and United Kingdom. And we all got together in one place. This was the very first time I took Bianca on a plane and it was nerve wracking and I was scared and I was worried. Thank God I had my tribe of people to help me. And I realized that as a single mom, it is hard work doing these things. But I realized that when I got back, I would have to get into the swing of things. So my full week back of work, I kind of just felt exhausted, exhausted from the trip, exhausted from the break in routine, um, exhausted as a mother, exhausted doing this by myself. And I just felt like, man, how am I going to get back on track? And I was feeling very down and depressed and lonely. And I think my postpartum depression was definitely kicking in. It was kicking me in my butt. But one of the things that helped me and I need to explain to you and express to you and help you with is in any season where there's a lot of change, a lot of up in the air issues, a lot of emotional battles, a lot of physical taxing work and a change, any type of change. So for me, being a, becoming a mom is a change. Being a single mom is a huge freaking change. So for me, knowing that I do day in and day out, take care of Bianca, not like all of it primarily by myself that is a huge change and then going to work and seeing 30 ish patients every single day where their parents are relying on me and these patients are relying on me and these tiny humans need me it was a lot it was a lot and I felt overwhelmed and I literally sat for an entire weekend and if those of you who kind of follow me on social media very well you saw that I kind of just unplugged I unplugged completely because and this is what we're going to talk about today I had to practice being being present I'm going to say that again I have to practice being present why because in the midst of the hustle and the bustle and the grit and the grind you lose yourself if you don't sit and practice being present and what I mean is I have to choose every single day to be present with myself and for myself. And how does that help me? It helps me find balance because otherwise I want to run away. I want to realize that I have all these obligations and this responsibility and now it's added on top of having a newborn and I wanted to escape. I love my daughter and I, and I love her with all my heart. She's a light of my life, but it was either amidst of a mix of I wanted to be just with her and I didn't want to do anything else or I needed to escape fully with her and be away from the entire world those were the two feelings that I was battling and then I sat there and I said okay Mariah take it down a notch you understand that you're dealing with anxiety postpartum depression you've had history of suicidal thoughts are you there no I'm not there I'm far from that because I've done so much personal development but it's okay to evaluate that that's not something that you need to fear It's something that you need to be honest with yourself. And I sat there and I said, okay, I'm not at that place. I'm dealing with some depression. I'm feeling better when I'm at work because I know I'm not supposed to be a stay-at-home mom. I know that I love my patients, but let me figure out the balance aspect. So I had to practice being present. So the things that help me the most every single day is devoting 30 to 60 minutes to my health. I get up and I work out every single day. I give myself a rest day on Sundays and usually it's a yoga day or a stretching day or I just hang out with B. Really, truly, that's what I do. And I realize that when I work out those 30 to 60 minutes, I'm releasing those endorphins. I'm feeling good about myself. And I remember every single day that I do that is that's one step closer to being healthy and happy. I'm encouraging myself to love myself because a practice of self-love is the most important. So I'm being present when I'm working out. 
I'm being present when I choose every day, whether it's in the morning, at lunchtime, or in the evening to meditate. And I meditate on things that are important in my life. I meditate on things that will help me just deep breathe and be present. And I have an app, it's called Ananda, and usually it's Deepak Chopra or a various of other um, gurus that kind of walk me through this meditation, this guided imagery meditation or this guided verbal imagery. Uh, meditation that helps me calm myself, be connected to my breath. Because when is the last time you paid attention to your breath? When is the last time you paid attention to taking in air and blowing it out? It is something that we don't see often and we don't quite grasp the magnitude of it. You just innately breathe and you don't realize that if you weren't breathing, you wouldn't be alive, but we yet don't see the vast of that statement when you're not breathing you're not alive so why not be present in each breath just take a second take a breath feel how your body feels do you feel aches do you feel pains is it hard to breathe is it stuffy is it crisp is there rain going on is it hotter than all get out especially here in Arizona um these are the things that you have to be present about And then when you're being present, not only in your breath and in meditation and in working out, but being present with other people, be present in the moment, practice putting your phone down, put your phone down for a second and just have a conversation, talk with somebody and get to know them, the real raw intricate person that you are in relation with. And I'm not saying a spouse, I'm not saying a significant other, I'm not saying, you know, it has to be that depth. I'm talking about anybody. It could be a coworker. It could be a friend. It could be your sister, your mom, your dad. You can have intricate communication with them where you're just learning something new. When you lose that zest to know about other people, that mystery and that communication with other people, you lose the spark of life. You, you feel like you need to reignite yourself or the times that you're feeling like, man, I really should move or maybe I don't feel good here. It's not that you need to move. The act of moving is just the excitement of being around other people that you now get to know. So don't stop getting to know other people don't, or the people that are in our life. Choose to meet new people, obviously, but the people that are in your life, Ask them questions, put your phone down, be present with them and choose to grow with them in that moment. Practice being present with other people. When you go to dinner, put the phone down. When you choose the restaurant, try and find one without a TV. Be present in that moment. Get to spend time with that person that you love. And then truly just understand that when you're practicing being present, it is okay to feel unbalanced. It is okay to feel overwhelmed. It is okay to be anxious. It is okay to be depressed. All of those feelings are okay. What's not okay is you staying there. So in the midst of being present and working through all those things, you need to be figuring out how you could grow. You need to figure out how you can get better. You need to figure out how you can choose to get out of that situation of depression or anxiety or worry. Sit down and journal. Be present with your thoughts. Be present with yourself. Love on yourself and give yourself grace. Guys, practice being present in this life because when we're going through the hustle and the bustle and the overwhelmed and we're accepting change and we're encouraging ourselves to get through it, that's when you lose your mind, honestly. And I felt like I was losing my mind. I felt like, oh my God, how can I balance all of these things? And I took a weekend and I practiced all of these things. I practiced self-love and giving myself the first part of the day, giving myself 30 to 60 minutes to work out and to feel good. I practiced being present with myself and journaling and loving on myself and giving myself grace. I practiced being present with the people that I was around. I practiced being present with my breath and meditating every single day to choose to feel good guys if you're going through something that's a whirlwind and you feel like your world is flipping upside down and you don't know how to stop it or control it I encourage you right now in this moment to implement these things of practicing presence practice presence in your life practice presence in your dreams 
Guys, if you don't practice these things, your dreams are never going to happen. They're going to wash away in the overwhelm. Your visions are never going to come true because they're going to be overshadowed by the feel, the fear of what's going on in your life. Remember, fear is false evidence appearing real. If you choose to practice presence, take a deep breath and see with unclouded vision what is going on in your life, you will be able to make the necessary steps you need to move forward. Guys, this is something that I hold true to my heart. Being in new seasons are hard. Whether you're a new mom, whether you're a new wife, whether you are newly divorced, whether you are newly widowed, whether you are experience a loss, whether you are going through some change, a job change, whatever it is, practice being present so that you can be at ease with what's going on and have a clear picture of what you need to do to continue to focus on your purpose, to continue po- to focus on your why, because at the end of your life, Brandon Burchard says it best. Did I love? Did I live? And did I matter? You don't want to go through this life of hustle and bustle and overwhelm and not be able to answer, did I love? Did I live? And did I matter? I want you to be able to answer those questions and they stem from being present in the moment. Did I love? Was I present with other people? Did I live? Did I live a healthy life? Was I present in each moment? Did I understand what breath was? Did I take a second to meditate? And did I matter? Did I choose to be present in each moment to make a difference and an impact in somebody else's life that needed me? Or was I so focused on the overwhelm of my own life that I didn't see clearly what was in front of me and I missed an opportunity to make an impact? Did I love? Did I live? And did I matter? All right, guys, I love you. Take these tangible things, practice being present in your life today and every day. Whether you have to set alarms as reminders, whether you just need to wake up every day and say, I'm grateful for this and send out appreciation at the end of your day, whatever that looks like for you, I'm asking you to practice being present in your life. All right, guys, until next Tuesday on the Your Life Matters podcast.